Hello everybody and welcome, I am Bricker Boom, and today we're gonna get the awkwardness right out of the way. In recording, despite using this particular scene with a camera, and always having said camera off, the camera was in fact on. And you will see me for a majority of this video. I write the script as I go along, so the later part of the game, I'll be sure to go ahead and turn that off. So I don't take away anything from the game, but I was not about to re-record a few hours worth of footage just because y'all see me. But anyway, this was a request left for me by General WD40, great name, starting the game with Shroomish, letting it evolve, and then beating the game with Breloom. The only time I've had Shroomish, I was a kid, and then the other time was a Nuzlocke where it got one hit KO'd by a wild bird, and I never had it again. To take a look at the stats, overall, Shroomish isn't that great, but as a first form Pokemon, that's not surprising. It has a fairly early evolution, and the attack stat gets jacked up thanks to it, and while there aren't a lot, a lot of fighting moves, there are enough for us to take advantage of its typing. Given the fact that Dark-type Pokemon run rampant in this game, having at least one fighting move is important. The main issue that I think we'll run into are going to be the Fire Gym, the Flying Gym, and then of course, the Psychic Gym. But let's go ahead and take a look at the rules. I can only use Shroomish and then Breloom in battle, but I can use other Pokemon for HM use. I can't use items in battle, but between battle is totally fine, and that's about it. I'm going to give the rival Torchic, because that will likely be the hardest for us to face given its fire moves. For the beginning Zigzagoon and not Poochie in a battle, we win in just a couple absorbs. To look at our ability in nature, we have the Spore ability. Basically, it works like static. Whenever a physical attack connects, they have a 30% chance of being either paralyzed, poison, or put to sleep. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a gamble. And while it's not the most reliable thing, it means that we probably won't focus too much on any status powders because... If they attack with a physical move and the ability procs but we're moving second, then if we would have used a poison powder it's just a wasted move. So I don't want to take that chance. We have a brave nature which means we get an increased attack but lowered speed. Honestly, given the fact that we're going to be focusing on having a physical attacker, I'm more than okay with that. Because if you take a look here at Breloom's stats once we get to him, he has a pretty good attack stat. But real quick, let's see how we handle the first May fight. We make sure to do a little bit of leveling since Shroomish stats are technically below a first form starter. Thankfully, between the beginning of the game and the May fight, it's easy to snag a quick level. And at level 6, it's a bit of a slugfest, but we do end up coming out the other side with a victory. Along the way to Roxanne, it's at this time I'd like to say, if you like the content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're inching closer and closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark, and our watch hours have crept past the 1,600 mark. Seeing the fact that even during the summer, there's still some growth is really exciting. It's slow, but it's exciting. <laughs> Along with the podcast that I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, we also started a new Ocarina of Time randomizer race with the baby rhino. So if you want to see that, make sure to check out the live stream. Also... In regards to the challenge, if this is your first time watching my Emerald Run, I don't cover too many of the Aqua and Magma fights. There's a lot, and 9 times out of 10, they're just not that exciting. You know what we do have time for, though, the Roxanne fight. Geodude goes down below half with Absorb, and we get hit with Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb lowers speed, but Roxanne spends the next turn healing, and then we can take it down. After that, the next Geodude is kind enough to go down easily, and that means we have full health left for the Nose Pass. We have an obvious plan, it's just gonna take forever to get through. First off, we use Leech Seed, and we get blocked, which is fine, we have no plans of leaving this battle. Then, we have to hit it with Stun Spore to get that Status Powder effect going on. From there, it's just an incredibly long back and forth with the fact that Roxanne also has a Potion, not helping matters. It takes a while since Absorb is pretty weak overall, but we do eventually take down the Nose Pass with plenty of HP to spare. After rescuing a bird for an old man and handing cutting edge technology back to the world's worst person to give it to, we go to leave the city. 
There is an optional May fight here, and given the fact that we have some difficult gyms ahead, we take advantage of the extra EXP. The low tad goes down to a few Mega Drains, making it so we have full HP when Torchic is out. With Torchic, we stun for it, then Leech Seed it, because we do need the passive HP. Thankfully, we get lucky on some hard hits and end up taking it down. Not necessarily a fight that we had to do, but one that I'm glad that we did because it does get us ever closer to that Breloom. After that, it's time for Duford, delivering a letter, and then going to fight Brawly for the first time. While we're going that way, I'm curious, when you're not watching this channel, whether it's binge-related content on, like, Netflix or just YouTubers that you enjoy, tell me some names in TV shows. I'm always looking for other creators I can potentially support, and also just looking for other TV shows that I can occasionally binge watch. I usually go for things like Scrubs, How I Met Your Mother, things like that. But we're gonna go ahead, we get the letter delivered. First time I navigated this cave, I had to use Flash and a small guide to find my way around. Now it's basically like the Dark Cave from Fire Red and I can get around without any issue. But let's take a look at Brawly to see if he gives us any trouble. We start with Mega Drain and it does concerningly little damage and Seismic Toss is obviously going to do pretty consistent damage. We swap over to Leech Seed, mostly to give the extra healing each turn and a little bit of chip damage. Now this takes a long time, especially because Brawly has potions up his sleeve. We finally do take it down, but it took far too long to do so, but one down. When Metatite comes out, it sets a bulk up as we miss Leech Seed, and it sends us straight to the Shadow Realm with a Focus Punch. We try this battle more than a few times, swapping with strategies like Stun Spore or trying immediate offense. Unfortunately though, Shroomish has reached the end of the road of usefulness, and it's unsurprising. Weak stats all around, and the fact that we're facing Pokemon that we don't have a type advantage against, rather than just rare candying up, we decide to head to Slateport, making our way through the trainers on the beach, knocking out the beginning of the Team Aqua storylines, and then head to the north until finally, we evolve. With our evolved form, our attack stat gets a major boost, and we head back to Brawly at that time. With our evolved form, we can one-shot both the Machop and the Metatite with a Headbutt. Makuhita is out, and we hit pretty hard with Headbutt, as it sets a bulk up. From there, it doesn't take long for us to take it out, win the battle, and move on. The good news is, with the Brawly fight, if it were too difficult of a battle, even for Breloom, we had other options of what we could have done. I'm thankful it didn't come to that, because I do typically like to try and knock out some of these in a somewhat consistent order, because I will forget to come back and then be really confused. But now we can officially move on. Now coming up, though, is one of the harder May fights. May first sends out Wingle, and we can take it down with a single headbutt. Combuskin comes out, and truthfully, if it attacks, it's gonna hurt. We headbutt, and thankfully get the flinch off headbutt, so we're able to take it out next turn. After that, it's a Lombre that gets flinched with a sliver of health left, so then it also goes down to a second headbutt, letting us win the battle, and move on to the brick wall that is Watson. If you've played Emerald before, or watched these videos, you know that Watson can be an absolute menace. More often than not, unless you have a Swampert, the likelihood of you winning this first try without prior knowledge of him is iffy at best. Voltorb is up first and hits a very weak spark, and we can take it out with a single headbutt. Next up is Electrike, and it's another one that we can take down with a single turn. We do pass up on counter, mostly because sometimes no matter what you thought the AI might do, it just does the exact opposite. When Magneton is out, we can Mach Punch it to red as it hits us with Thunder Wave. Watson heals up, we stay paralyzed, and it hits us. We can take it back to red, then stay paralyzed another turn as Watson heals up, before we take it to red, and then finally take it down. After that, it's Vaynectric, and it goes to a little below half as the berry heals it up to green. Unfortunately, we spend a few turns too many being paralyzed and ultimately go down without too much of a fight. Taking down Watson takes a handful of attempts, and it's mostly due to bad paralysis luck. On a really bad attempt, we get paralyzed every other turn, sometimes more. On a good attempt, it's still frighteningly close to half. But on this attempt, Voltorb hits a weak spark and goes down to a single headbutt, and Mainectric does the same. Magneton goes to red with a mock punch, and we unfortunately get paralyzed. Watson heals, and we repeat the process a few times before finally being able to take it down. 
With main act trick, it goes below half with headbutt, but thankfully shockwave isn't doing too much. The berry heals it above half, and we can take it into the yellow before taking it down. From here, we have a little bit of leg work ahead of us, and... <sighs> I wrote the same thing in the script twice. Summer hours can be rough, but we're still pushing forward. From here, we have a little bit of leg work ahead of us, and I wanted to mention something that has been happening, because I'm still very much trying to figure out the algorithm. A friend of mine decided to go ahead and watch my old Doki Doki Literature Club content, which was an absolute nightmare. But I've had people now discovering videos that I uploaded about a year ago, and I don't know if YouTube occasionally just pushes out old content once you have a good library built up. I don't know. But at the very least, I hope you've been having a good start to the summer. My kid is out for the summertime, and despite having to go to a different store to work for a few weeks, I'm hoping that we can still produce some good videos. But in the most anime fashion available to us, it's time to fight Maxi while on top of an active volcano. Mydena goes to yellow and only retaliates with bite before Maxi heals up. We take it back to red and we can knock it out next turn. Camerupt is out next and we hit it with Mock Punch as it only uses focus energy. We swap over to Headbutt and nail it with a critical hit which takes it down. Zubat is last, and it goes down easy enough to win the battle, but I have a feeling by the time it evolves into Crobat and can easily outspeed us, we are going to get annihilated by this thing. Now we have to go against someone that I think is going to be a bit more of a problem. I can see Flannery being a brick wall because Overheat is insanely strong, and yes, it may lower the special of the user. The first attack is still going to be insanely strong, potentially boosted from the sunlight, and on top of that, I believe it's the camera up that has the white herb. So let's see what happens. Numol's out first, and we're able to take it down with a single headbutt. Next up is camera up, and we take it below half and get the flinch, which is what lets us take it down. Slugma is a horrible Pokemon, so it's a pretty easy one shot. And then last is Torkoal. We swap over to Mach Punch and it barely does a quarter, so Overheat, as we guessed, immediately knocks us out. Without much of a choice, we do end up having to level up for the first time in this particular run. With this though, we have a strategy, but it's a bit of luck that's needed. Her first three Pokemon are an easy one-shot, but with Torkoal, that's where we need the luck. We headbutt it, and we get the flinch, which is perfect, so we swap over to Sky Uppercut, a less than 100% accurate move, cross our fingers, and then that's that. This took a few times because Sky Uppercut on its own didn't do enough, so we needed that secondary flinch effect to proc, and then of course a slightly lower accuracy move to actually land. With another gym down and getting harshly judged for my cycling skills on Cycling Road, we can see how we do against Norman. Truthfully, out of all the leaders that we've gone against, this is the first time that I feel even remotely confident. Given our type advantage, even the mighty slacking shouldn't be too much of an issue. Spinda is up first, and we land a Sky Uppercut, knocking it out in one shot. Next is Vigoroth, and it just meets the same fate, and then Lanoon also falls. With slacking, we Leech Seed it on its attack turn, just in case. And then Sky Uppercut while it's loafing to be able to take it down for a pretty easy first try victory. And after having to bank on luck or levels for the last couple of gems, Feels good to be able to take out a leader without too much trouble. But that's where the easy battles will likely end, because we've got Winona, Tate, and Liza before we even get to Juan. Then there's a nightmare that will be Phoebe whenever you play with any type of physical attacker. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. We have a Weather Institute to take back, and then we have one of the final May fights. Just looking at the footage here, you can see that there isn't much to worry about with the May fight. Even if you're not overleveled, as long as you have someone powerful moves, May is likely never going to be a problem. There is one more optional battle for her in front of the supermarket, but once again, it's a pretty laughable team. Admittedly, I'm curious why this particular rival is so weak in comparison, and if any of you know offhand, I'd love to hear it, because I feel like you have the rival from Gen 1 pretty powerful, then you have Gen 2, not super great, but you get to fight Red and Blue. Then you have Gen 3, not great. And then I want to say 4 and 5 are pretty good, but maybe I'm wrong. 
All right, I guess I've probably stalled enough. We should probably take a look and see how the Winona fight goes. With Swablu, we can take it down with a single headbutt. As Pelipper comes out, we can take it below half as it hits us with wing attack, and then we can take it down. Skarmory goes to red with Sky Uppercut and takes us to red in return. Winona does end up healing up a couple times, but since we don't miss, we can take it out. We manage to both outspeed and one-shot the Troprius, and then the last and biggest threat, Altaria, immediately takes us down. This takes about a dozen attempts, but the beginning of the battle is almost the same. Swablu is always going to be a one-shot, and then with Pelipper, this time, rather than attacking us, it uses Supersonic. We don't smack ourselves a million times, so we can take it down. The Tropius only sets up Sunny Day, so we can take it out without any issue. With Altaria, we get the flinch off Headbutt, and then we can take it out next turn, getting a high roll on the damage to win us the battle, and run out of here before she changes her mind. Now we're starting to get to the back half of the Magma and Aqua storyline, and remember when I said that the Zubat, eventually a Crobat, would be an issue? Well, it is. I'm able to take out the Mighty Ina and the Camera Ups without too much of an issue. It's able to take us out in two turns, though. The first attack against us does a lot of damage, and I think we can take it down, but I think we need to outspeed first. We end up leveling up, and Mighty Ina, of course, goes down to one shot. This time, though he hasn't used it in almost two dozen attempts, the Crobat just uses Confuse Ray. We don't smack ourselves and land a much-needed critical hit to take down the Crobat. After that, the Camera Up goes down below half, only sets up Amnesia, then Maxi spends a few turns healing before allowing the Mon to go down. I, I don't know what- yeah, I'm moving on to Tate and Liza. Now, this battle, I'm actually kind of proud of how I was able to go about it, and even more proud to say that it was a first try victory. So what we do is we go ahead and leech seed the clay doll because it will always, almost always, prioritize using Earthquake so it doesn't affect its friends. The Zatu is going to use the first turn attacking our ally, so we avoid it that turn. Earthquake, unless it crits, isn't going to do too much damage. We do heal up most of the damage that Earthquake deals to us. Eventually it could take us down with enough time, but it probably won't have enough PP to do so. So we go on the offensive, we flinch the Zatu, and then the next turn we take it down. As Lunatone comes out, we use Mega Drain, healing back up to full as it sets up a Calm Mind. Knowing we'd likely take it into healing range with a special attack, we swap over to Sky Uppercut and knock it out. As Soul Rock comes out, we take it to what I have to imagine as 0.001% of a single hit point. The Berry takes it back to yellow, and then we can take it down. After that, it's a Mega Drain and a Sky Uppercut to the Clay Doll that lets us win the badge. One small teeny tiny apocalypse later, we can continue with the important stuff, gathering gym badges, and we only have one more fight to go, and that's Juan, a water trainer, who seems to also have a little bit of a nice affinity with his title. The Love Disc goes down to one headbutt, and then when Celio comes out, we swap over to Sky Uppercut, and that knocks it out. With Kingdra, we can take it to half as it begins double teaming. Thankfully though, we can still connect and take it out next turn. Whiskash is four times weak to grass, so even with our lackluster special attack, we could take it down with one Mega Drain. Finally, he has a Crawdaunt that is a one-shot as well, and we're officially done with all eight badges. Now that the eight gym badges are done and out of the way, it's time to make our journey through Victory Road, but there is one person waiting for us, despite him not being much of a challenge at all. With Altaria, we can take it to about half as it repays the favor with a hard-hitting air cutter, but then we take it down. We do take the Gardevoir to red, and thankfully it only sets up Future Sight before it too goes down. After that, Rosalia is an easy one-shot, but upon Delcaddy entering, we take the Future Sight attack. To make sure that we don't go down, we swap over to using Mega Drain and actually go through a pretty long set of back and forth before it goes down. Last up is Magneton as we hit a Sky Uppercut to take it down, win the battle, and fumble our way through the cave. The cave is always a little bit confusing, and I spend far too much time wandering through, especially the fact that I've played this before, but we do make it through Victory Road, and it's time to test our hand at the Elite Four. 
these are our stats right before going into the Elite Four, and honestly, even with our special attack being our weakest, we're not in too bad of a shape, so let's do this and see what happens. Sydney is the first of the Elite Four, and unfortunately for him, he's a dark type trainer. We spend the next few turns dismantling the entirety of his team, and because of the one-shot sweep, there isn't much to cover, so let's go ahead and move on to Phoebe. In a probably not-so-surprising turn of events, Phoebe is able to win pretty handily against us, given the fact that our special is the weaker of our two stats, and we can't learn too many more moves. It takes a long time, mostly due to the Dusclops having pressure. Pressure makes it so every time you use an attack or you click on an attack, it uses two PP instead of one. So we're typically able to make it through most of her team, but given the fact that we can only struggle towards the end, we usually just end up taking ourselves down. At Even at level 89, we almost don't win this, and this was the 17th attempt at this level with each Pokémon to make sure that we have enough HP, we have to Leech Seed it, and we have to use Headbutts trying to predict the turns that Dusclops uses Protect. It takes forever, but we finally managed to take each of her Pokémon down, winning the battle, and moving to the third member of the Elite Four. After the brick wall that was Phoebe, we move on to Glacia, and just like with Sydney, it's a one-shot sweep. Ice types are weak to fighting, we have a pretty good attack stat and a decent speed enough stat, so we're able to go through her team and then move our way on to Drake. Now against Drake, this is where we need to do a bit of an upgrade. We end up learning Bulk Up, knowing it'll help us tank some hits against his attack happy dragons, and it'll help us output some more damage as well. So. We Leech Seed the Shellgon, and as it wails on us with attacks, we spend our time bulking up. Given the fact that we're gaining passive HP, we're not in danger. After that, it's time for us to go on our Rampage, headbutting his team into submission, one-shotting each of them. Time for Wallace. With Wallace, he starts with Wailord, and we take it to around half with Mega Drain, and then we spend the next turn bulking up as Blizzard hits hard. After that, we can take it down with our next turn. Then, we use Mega Drain on Milotic, and then we can take it out with our next turn with a Headbutt. After that, we can take Tentacruel out with a Headbutt. The Whiskash is four times weak to Grass, so it goes down. And then we spend way too many turns trying to Leech Seed Ludicolo, but upon realizing it just won't work, and focusing on attacking instead, we can take it down. And then last is Gyarados, who goes down to two Headbutts to win the battle, and technically the run. Now, if you've watched my videos before, or even played Emerald before, you know that there's one more fight that we can do. While it's completely optional, it's always a lot of fun to see if it's something that we can beat. While some Pokémon while some Pokémon can't take on the Super Secret Steven Stone fight, try saying that five times fast, I have a good feeling Breloom will be able to. Steven first sends out Skarmory, and this is always an absolute pain to deal with, and as of recording this today, my Skarmory short dropped, so you should probably go ahead and go check that out and give it a thumbs up, because that's the only way the algorithm will notice you. The Skarmory opens up with Spikes, as we open up with Leech Seed. The next turn, it hits us with Aerial Ace, but our Spore ability activates and puts it to sleep. So, we can go ahead and spend some time bulking up, while also gaining back some HP from what we lost with Aerial Ace. After that, we can go ahead and go on another one-shot sweep, taking down his Pokémon after 23 attempts. But hey, I hope y'all enjoyed this run because I definitely did. There were a few parts that were harder than I had imagined, but there were also a lot of parts that were just fun little strategy bits. Luck definitely played a huge part in a lot of this run, given the fact that sometimes it was based off what we got with Spore, and the opponent would then allow us to bulk up. Overall, Breloom definitely gained some respect from me today. Next week, assuming I can finish on time, I have a Porygon run planned. Discord, Patreon, watch hours, all the things that I usually try to knock out in the outro, but I've got some games to play and some recording to do. So, as always, as we say in our real outro, if you like the video, even if you didn't like the video, hit the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out!